my work as a somatic sex educator is all about the body. It's all about drawing the wisdom out of the body and bringing it to the forefront. So it is bringing what is unconscious into consciousness. It is integrating the intellect of the mind with the wisdom of the body. The grand scheme of it is always returning the spotlight to what does it feel like for you to be alive right now? If you're a musician or an athlete or a dancer or even if you're a photographer or a computer scientist, you are taught how to use your body in the effort to perform, you know, do sport, to create beauty, right, to create this project. But by and large, we are not taught how to use our body for pleasure. Mm -hmm. And so that's what I'm doing. <laughs> and I'm, I'm also, even as the expert or the guide, I'm also consistently turning the camera back or turning the light back onto the individual that I'm working with, right? You are the expert and you are the authority on what is true for you. I've tried a thousand or 10,000 different things so I can talk about my experience in great detail. And the part of that that's so powerful is that we generally don't talk about our sex life in great detail, except what sucks. We don't talk about what it's like to um, coordinate our breath with our movement or to how to use our voice in a way that brings more pleasure or creates more connection. And I'm really interested in the details of that and to really help you understand the details so that you're using the tools that you already have inside of you without, you don't have to spend $10,000 on toys. Mm -hmm. You know, mm -hmm. you don't have to try 97 different positions. What I really want to do is help you trust yourself and, you know, trust your body and your intuition and your desires as, uh, as assets, as wisdom, as the as your guiding light because it's so easy for us to um, communicate what is really crappy what sucks what's hard what's painful what we don't want to be experiencing and because we live in a culture that's consistently telling us that there's something wrong with us and we need to buy more products or be different mm -hmm. then we're we are consistently oriented in this way and particularly in the like exacerbated you know, political landscape of fear and fascism, right? We're m even more concentrating on that now. Mm -hmm. And for some of us that's new, and for many of us that's been going on for a really long time, right? Mm -hmm. So this, there is a, you know, there's a lot of anxiety around sex and the body and coming to somebody that you don't know and talking about the most intimate details of what you do with your body for pleasure. What do you mean when you say sacred? I mean special. I mean, uh, you know, elevated, profound, sacred, and profane. I mean, something greater than just myself and my partner. I mean, connected to the cosmos and, you know, like, rapturously dirty. I, I mean, all of those things, right? It's not just about, you know, a transcendent moment, right? Or a religious experience. But it is um, connection to our you know, vital human fundamental need for sexual expression, mm -hmm. right? It's, it's not a luxury, it's a necessity. Preach. <laughs> yes. Right? Yeah. And when we connect into that necessity, mm -hmm. right, then we can connect into um, a, a much bigger experience of humanity. And we can connect into a much greater and vaster experience of compassion and empathy. This experience of like, we are on this planet together, you know, this is our only home, we are connected, we are human beings, we are, we are in this together, mm -hmm. right? And so much of the work that I do with clients is not just about having a better orgasm, mm -hmm. as part of it, mm -hmm. or like figuring out your relationship with your erection, as part of it, mm -hmm. but the biggest piece of it is can you be appreciative of yourself? Can you be compassionate with yourself? Can you really like find a place, you don't have to fall in love with yourself, but can you find a place where you can appreciate exactly who you are, exactly in this moment, and how you have constructed and choreographed your life to be here right now? Mm -hmm. Rather than continuously making yourself wrong, mm -hmm. because we don't change when we make ourselves wrong. The ways that we get out of shame, the spiral of shame, is that we, we 
cre we, we create and we get into social environments where we can be honest and real and vulnerable. And sometimes uh, the first step that we can take is to do that with just one other person. Mm -hmm. And many times that's what I'm doing, mm -hmm. is being that one other person that someone can trust. Mm -hmm. You know, I, I don't run away. No one gets fired. Yeah. Everyone, you know, every element of you is welcome in the room, mm -hmm. whether you're like awkward or really savvy. Are most of your clients individuals or is it like a mix of individuals and partner <clears throat> people? Um, I work with really sensitive heterosexual men. <laughs> Um, and a lot of them are sensitive in that they want to have equality and egalitarianism in their relationship mm -hmm. and they're really anxious about how to uh, bring forth their, um, their more powerful self or their more assertive self, right? Mm -hmm. um, and, and because of that, or in addition to that, they struggle with things like um, erectile dysfunction or mm -hmm. um, early ejaculation. And underneath all of that is, am I doing it right? You know, I work with women across the sexual orientation spectrum mm -hmm. and um, across the gender history spectrum mm -hmm. who are trying to figure out, like, how can I trust my body and my intuition? How can I um, be true about who I am? How can I, uh, you know, figure out how to have an orgasm consistently every time or, or you know, ha be at more um, peace with it, less anxiety, less fighting, less chasing, right? Mm -hmm. And so... Mm -hmm consistently underneath all of that is, am I doing it right? Am I okay? Am I normal? Right? What and are your thoughts about normal? Can, if I can, sorry, if I can... Yeah, jump in, get yeah. the tangent. To me, normal is like the word interesting. It doesn't mean much anymore. <laughs> yeah. Because, uh, because we, it, because we overuse it, right? Uh, and, you know, I personally believe that there is a normal for you that is different than the normal for me. Mm -hmm. Because we're different human beings. We don't mm -hmm. share the same body or the same brain. Mm -hmm. So what I'm really looking for with my clients and uh, what I really stress with them is what is common. What's common and also what's regular. What's regular for you? Mm -hmm. Like what is your regular experience? What is your common experience? Right, what is your baseline? Yeah, okay. Right, mm -hmm. because what I'm looking to do with my clients is not give everybody a makeover. You don't need a makeover. <laughs> you don't need a sexual erotic makeover. You need a couple of tweaks here and there. Mm -hmm. Now, that may mean that we go, you know, a mile wide and an inch deep in, mm -hmm. in five different places. Mm -hmm. It also may mean we go an inch wide and a mile deep mm -hmm. in one place. Mm -hmm. And the more intimate that I work with clients, the more we go deeper rather than broader. Mm -hmm. And that's a function of intimacy, connection, trust, longevity, amount of time that we spend together. Mm -hmm. And, you know, I use touch in my practice. Right. 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 Which, Which is therapists yeah, don't do. Obviously, right. Right. Mm -hmm. And so, you know, my, my style is um, very interactive. There's, uh, mm -hmm. you know, I tell my own story. I'm vulnerable. I show up really in the room. Mm -hmm. I don't hide away. Mm -hmm. And I use touch as a form of communication because that's exactly what it is. Right. And it is yeah. touch also, um, because it's communication, it, it also elicits response that we can't access simply by talking. Yeah. And so part, uh, a big part of what I'm doing here is I am creating an environment uh, to elicit a response from you. Mm -hmm. not, I'm not planning to try and get a particular response. Mm -hmm. I'm trying to instigate something in you, mm -hmm. something, so that we can understand what the something is. Mm -hmm. Right? So I'm, I'm creating an environment and facilitating an experience for you to learn more about yourself so that you can take ownership of who you are and really trust in your own experience. And that you can do that in an environment where you don't have to owe me anything. Mm -hmm. There's no sense of reciprocity here. Mm -hmm. You've already paid me, that's what you owe me. Yeah. Right? Yeah. And so in this experience, it's okay for you to like stumble on your words or get really anxious or like, you know, experience pleasure or like take up a lot of space in the room like mm -hmm. 
that's what this is. Mm -hmm. And for a lot of people, we don't get that opportunity. We're worried about whether or not our partner or our friend is what they're thinking of us. Mm -hmm. Or are we taking up too much time talking about our own story? Mm -hmm. Or if I tell you that I didn't like this thing that you did the other day, like, are you going to leave me? Will I lose connection with you? Because I'm honest. That's such a shame. That, is, so that is shame. That is shame. That is exactly what it is. That is shame. Yeah. Right? And that's what I want to dismantle and eradicate. So, you know, one part is that the vast majority of us don't really understand what the, um, don't understand the, the wide range of what human needs are. Mm -hmm. Right? Many of us think that our human needs are food, shelter, and water. And that's it. Mm -hmm. Oh, and clothing. That's it, right? But the truth is, is that we have a need for autonomy and for interconnection and for respect and for emotional safety and for play and laughter and sexual expression, mm -hmm. right? Marshall Rosenberg did a, did a really great list in nonviolent communication. Mm -hmm. And the vast majority of us also don't understand what feelings are. <laughs> we don't know how to name our feelings, yeah. right? So we name our feelings as, I feel like you're an asshole. That's not a feeling, right? So. When we don't know what our needs are, mm -hmm. right, and we diminish our own needs, and we don't know what our feelings are, we cannot communicate effectively what is happening for us, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. And so when we can't do that, if we're also on the other side of that and we're the one hearing it, right, yeah, we're both going to hear it or we're both going to experience it as there's something wrong with me. Right. Because we don't have a culture in this you know, it, we don't have an experience in this society, in this culture of um, being able to hear that your experience is your experience and that you own it and that, you know, 95% of what you do is about your bullshit. 95% of what I do is about me. Mm -hmm. Same thing, mm -hmm. right? And so, um, you know, the big piece of around sexual experiences and sexual relationships is that like we take all of that with us into sex and then we amplify the anxiety by a thousand, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. So what happens is, is that if we have an underlying belief that there's something wrong with me, then I'm going to look for evidence for whatever experience I'm having with you and you're going to prove to me that there's something wrong with me. So a big part of the work that I'm doing mm -hmm. is consistently trying to unwind that with people. That's why I tell my own story. Mm -hmm. Because there is nothing wrong with me when I, you know, did any number of things in the past mm -hmm. that were really smart or uh, that caused me a lot of heartache. You know, this, is, this space is really designed to um, give you the tools to, uh, you know, trust your body, your intuition, your desires, and really be at home and, and be the owner of your own sexual authority and uh, sexual pleasure. And so, you know, again, I talked about shame earlier in the context of one of the things that we need to do is come together as a community and, uh, and have communal uh, experiences and environments because this is how we unlock shame, where we can look at each other and, and, and really witness with each other. The, the act of being a witness is, you know, it, this is sacred, right? This is special. This is like so necessary, right? And, and you know, one of the things you asked me earlier about sacred, what do I mean by that? And, uh, you know, people who um, go to, uh, whether it's a, 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 you know, the women's march, you know, and there's 100,000 people in the streets, or it is a football game and there are 50,000 people in the stands, what happens when we all get together and we like hone our energy and we focus on one thing and we like drill in and we're like so focused? That is an act of the sacred. That is an act of magic. That is an act of changing uh, collective consciousness at will. That is a metaphysical experience that we are creating together and we are hungry for that. Yes, we are. As human beings and we're designed for it. Mm -hmm. It's part of our DNA. It's part of the, like, what we're doing here as a species. And so when we do this in a sexual context, we are changing our minds. We are literally like, reshaping the cells of our own body because we're shaking off trauma, we're shaking off the shame, literally vibrating it out of our skin mm -hmm. so that we can be more bioavailable for our life experience and we can use the tools that are 
in us and with us at all times. And we can, you know, we're, we're, we're changing our minds in a way of, you know, creating more neuroplasticity, right? So we're huh. rewiring our brain. Uh -huh. And in the process of rewiring re our brain, what we're doing is learning how to, um, for different neurons to fire together. So we're creating different kinds of pathways for us to get from stillness to through anxiety and into excitation, arousal, and pleasure and climax, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. And and that's not just about orgasm, but that's also about like when we go to the football game and we're like focusing on the quarterback, like oh my god, through the pass, through the butts, he's running, he's running, he got a thing, ah! It's the same thing. Right. <laughs> it's release. Exactly. Yeah. Right. And it's 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 orientation, and mm -hmm. it is accomplishment, and mm -hmm. it is you know, it, and it is the flood of the chemicals that wash over us, and like, what happens after orgasm? What happens, right, when you feel, when you get that orgasm and you're like laying there or standing there or like dancing in the club still and you're like, oh, I'm on this earth. I am connected, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. I am connected to myself. Mm -hmm. I am connected to all of these people in this room or the people that I love. I am connected to this planet. And I'm also connected to my art and my passion and my mission. And when we feel amazing in our skin and we feel at home in our body and we feel connected to other people and we feel seen and heard and witnessed and loved and appreciated, then we take bigger risks. Mm -hmm. We take our art and our passion and our work to more people, we get seen more, and some of us make more money, some of us make more impact, some of us, you know, like have a bigger prayer that we're working with. Mm -hmm. But either way, there's this like we're seen. One of the biggest pieces is not just about like learning how to have more um, pleasure in your skin, but it's learning how to actually see somebody so that you can be seen too, so that you can really stand up and shine more in your life.